What's causing this patient's trouble walking? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 65-year-old male who was having trouble walking long distances. He noticed when he took a trip to Disney with his grandkids that he couldn't walk a long distance without having to stop to rest. When he walked for a certain distance, he would notice that his back would hurt and then he would get sciatic pain down both legs. But if he stopped to rest, all of that would go away. His grandkids just thought he was being lazy, but the problem progressed as he got home. And even when he went around the grocery store, he had to lean over the grocery cart in order to prevent this from happening. His MRI that he had done showed critical lumbar stenosis at L4 and L5, or severe narrowing around the nerve roots. Let's talk about what an MRI should really look like. When we look at the MRI, these squares are the bones in our back, and then these spaces right here are the discs, or the cushions that are in our back. And then this white space here is called the spinal canal where all the nerve roots travel. Now the white in there is the spinal fluid and the little gray nerve roots are the actual nerves that go down our back. Those nerves start in our spine and go all the way down our legs. So if they get compressed in here, it can actually cause leg pain. Now on this MRI, you see the arrows show how much space is typically within the spinal canal. And then let's compare that to our patients. Ouch! His nerves are basically in a chokehold. That's called spinal stenosis, and then the symptoms he's getting is called neurogenic claudication. What does that mean? Basically, when we walk, bend, twist, or move in any fashion, those nerves slide up and down our spinal canal. So you can imagine if there's an area of narrowing, those nerves will slide up against that area of narrowing and cause inflammation, and that hurts. That's what's causing the leg pain. Now let's talk about the grocery cart thing because that is something that I ask all of my patients. Leaning forward, like leaning over a cart, opens that spinal canal and actually makes the symptoms better. Now there's lots of reasons why people develop lumbar stenosis. It can be from bone spurs and arthritis, it can be from a herniated disc, or it can even be from a slip vertebrae called a spondylolisthesis. Say that 10 times fast. So the treatment really depends on what's causing it. In this patient's case, it's just a buildup of arthritis at this L4 and L5. L4 and L5 is the most common level where we develop degenerative spinal stenosis. Why? It's because it takes a lot of stressors. If we think about our L5-S1, it gets a lot of gravitational force, but it's semi-protected by the pelvis. L4 and L5 is the first disc outside of the pelvis, so it gets the most strain with bending, lifting, and twisting. Well, doc, how do we fix it? Now, with most cases with back issues, we start with conservative treatment, and that would include physical therapy, activity modifications, medications such as anti-inflammatory medications, muscle relaxers, pain medications, and gabinergic medicines such as gabapentin or Lyrica. We could also try epidural steroid injections, which may provide some relief. However, I would argue with this patient's young age and the amount of stenosis seen on his MRI that surgery is the most likely to give him long-term benefit. Well, let's talk about it. So how do we perform this procedure? It can be done in an open fashion with a bigger incision or through a minimally invasive procedure where we make a small, tiny little incision. Here you see a minimally invasive approach, which is my preferred approach for this type of procedure. First, we dock a dilator right down on the lamina at that L4 and L5 level where the nerves are very tight. Through this portal, we use high magnification with a microscope and place a drill and drill down the bone to access the area where the nerves travel. After we remove the bone, that's where the magic happens and we use special instruments to remove that arthritis tissue away from the nerves. When we're done, everything is nice and decompressed and the nerves have plenty of room. Generally speaking, this is an outpatient surgery that takes about 45 minutes to complete. It's pretty straightforward and it's one of the most common procedures that I perform in my practice. I perform at least 15 to 20 of these types of procedures per month which means that I've literally done thousands of them. Now this patient underwent a minimally invasive lumbar laminectomy at L4 and L5, and he went home the same day. His symptoms were completely resolved on post-operative day number one. He went to Disney three months later with his grandkids and had no reason to stop and rest unless it was for snacks. Another example of patient-focused and compassionate care. I'll see you guys next week for another case. And next week will be from the country music capital of the world. See you then.